everyone welcome back in this video we will be discussing about the last problem of today's weekly contest subsequence with minimum score the problem states that you are given two string s and t you are allowed to remove any characters from the string t and if you haven't removed any characters from the tree the score would be zero but if you have removed some character from t the score would be defined as right minus left plus one where right is the maximum index among all the removed characters and left is the minimum index of all the removed characters. So you need to return the minimum possible score to make T a subsequence of S, right? So notice that we are allowed to remove any characters from T, right? So it is always possible to remove everything from T and make T empty. So at that point, t would be a subsequence of s because empty string is a subsequence of any other string, right? So notice that it is always possible to make t a subsequence of s. We just need to return the minimum possible score, right? So let's take an example. Let's say that s is a b a c a b a and t is b z a, b z a, right? So here what they are saying is let's remove this z, right? So if you remove this z, the remaining string t would be b a a. So B A A is a subsequence of S because see B A and then A, right? So because it is in the order B A A is a subsequence of S. Now because B A A is subsequence subsequence of S, the removal of Z is a valid removal. Like you you can remove Z only. And what is the score? The score would be minimum and like maximum index minus minimum index plus one. So here the maximum and minimum index are both equal hence the score would be 1 minus 1 plus 1 which is 1 and this is the minimum possible score in which you can make t a subsequence of s hence the answer is 1 right so hope the problem statement is clear now how to solve this so notice the cost function the function is left right minus left plus 1 right so let's say you removed z x y right and let's say this a right now in this particular configuration what is the score the score would be minimum index which is l maximum index which is r right and the score would be r minus l plus one right now does it make sense to not remove this a as well so basically the score is only dependent on the maximum and the minimum index that you are removing so it will always make sense to remove everything in between that right so if you re if you also remove this a and this a the score would not change because minimum index would remain l maximum index would remain r so what we are seeing is the if there is l and r we can remove everything in between and the score would be same now can we remove everything like uh, should we remove everything or not is the question so should we also remove this a and a the answer is yes because you want to make the remaining string t a subsequence of the string s right so the less the number of characters in t the more the chances that it will be a subsequence of s so subsequence is nothing but matching right so you are matching this b with this b this a with this a right now let's say this a would not be removed so this a would be matched to this a this a would be matched to this a right hence now there is one a which is remaining now because you can't map map this a to anything above after this you you will say that the remaining string would not be a subsequence of s right but what we could have done we could have removed this a and this a as well because the score would be same right so after removing this a this a can be mapped easily to this one and the remaining string would be a subsequence of s right so what we are seeing is by removing everything in between we are increasing our chances to make t a subsequence of s so let's say that we, whenever we remove whenever we remove l and r we will always remove all the elements in between because the score would not change and that would increase the chances that t would be a subsequence of s right so this is our first observation right now with this operative observation the problem is bit simplified what we are saying is we will remove everything between l and r right so in essence, 
we are removing this thing. So the remaining string should be a subsequence of S. That's what we need to check, right? So what we can do, we can just iterate over all possible L and R, figure out the remaining string, just check whether the remaining string is a subsequence of S or not. If it is, this L and R is a valid configuration and we will just take minimum across all L and R. So the pseudocode uh, would look uh, something like this, right? So we will just say that, okay, we will try every possible L and R, right? And we will remove everything in between L and R, right? So we will, the, re the remaining string would be everything before L, which is 0 to L minus 1, this part, right? And everything after, uh, after R, which is this part, right? So we will take the new string, we'll check whether the new string is a subsequence of S or not. If it is, we will take the minimum uh, we know that this L and R is valid and we will just take the minimum across the current result, right? So hope this makes sense. Now, how does you implement is subsequence? So this is a very standard problem. I would strongly encourage you to pause the video right away and try this out yourself. How do you find whether a string uh, is a subsequence of another string or not, right? So hope you thought about it. Now let's look at the solution. The solution is very straightforward. We just need to map, right? So we will just, we will we'll keep on iterating over all the indexes of T. So notice that we need to find out whether this, the remaining T is a subsequence of the above string or not. So we've, we have to consider all the characters here. So what we will say, okay, we will iterate over T one by one. So we will, the first character is B. We will see, okay, which uh, what is the first B in S? We will just map it to there, right? Now, the index of S is now pointing at A, right? Now this is, we will also move the second, we will also move the index of T. So the next character is A. We will map this A, right? So this A is mapped to here, right? Now index would be moved forward. Now we got another A. We will check what is the next A. This is the next A, right? So we will just move, map this A to this, right? and we will increment our index to the next one. Now, what is the next day after this? Next day after this is this, right? So we map this to this, right? We will increment our index to the index after this, which is nothing. So now we are, say, we are seeing, uh, what we are seeing is, we have exhausted the entire string, but we haven't mapped all the characters of A. And that's where we will say, okay, the given, the given string T is not a sequence of S. So that's what we have to do. We just iterate over all the characters of T one by one, just figure out what is the first matching character in S and keep on mapping it, right? So the pseudocode would look something like this. So what we will say, we will start with uh, index uh, S index to be zero, right? Now we will iterate over all the indexes in T one by one. We will try to map the current index with the, uh, index in S. So we are checking whether S is equals, whether, whether the character at current index of S is equals to the character which we are trying to find. If it is, we will break out from the loop and we will increment our S index, right? Now, after doing this for all the characters, we will check if S index is less than S length or not. Uh, sorry, and there's, there's one more thing. Uh, basically, we can keep keep track of what is found. So if S index is uh, greater than S length, we will return false. Otherwise we will return true, right? So just a small if uh, edge case will be there, but this is overall algorithm, right? So now what is the time complexity? The time complexity would be, we are doing two loops here and inside this loop, so okay, we are doing two loops. So first loop will iterate over n times. Second loop will also iterate over n times, right? Now, inside these, these two loops, what we are doing is we are calculating a new T. So this calculation of new T would take order and time, right? Because we have to iterate over all the characters of uh, all the prefix and suffix, right? And after this, we are calling is subsequence. Now is subsequence is also iterating over the, all the characters of S and T. So this is also order n, right? So hence the time complexity would be order n cube, right? this is the time complexity. Now, will this pass? Uh, surely not because 
n is up to 10 to the power 5 even n square will not pass so how would n cube will pass so we have to optimize this but this is a valid solution right this is a valid solution now we have to optimize this now which one of this n you can remove first so first of all like this l and r you can't remove because that's the uh, that's the way we have you have reduced the problem right so you can't remove this l and r so let's try to remove or simplify this particular piece right so this particular piece says that we need to check whether the remaining string is a subsequence of s or not right so notice that if l is fixed right let's say l is fixed now if l is fixed we know that let's say current r is this and next r is this right so if l is fixed we know this b would be mapped to this this a would be mapped to this so why would we want to map this b and a again because s is also fixed and l is also fixed so we know this prefix would be mapped to would be mapped to 2 like up to 2 so the next character would start searching from the index 3 right so we we don't want to start every time we don't need to start at every time at index 0 right and that's where we can save something right so hope you got the intuition so what we're saying is we are saying that every time we are trying to map the same prefix right and hence we are starting from zero but it doesn't make sense to start from zero if we have mapped this prefix once and we know that okay it is ending at two so the next index should start from three so the suffix should start from three so this s index should may not be always zero right so the same argument can be applied to the suffix as well let's say r is fixed so if r is fixed you know that this particular piece would be mapped to like okay so let's just uh, get rid of some of this stuff right so what we are saying is let's say r is fixed so if if this is the r we know that this a would be mapped to this this a would be mapped to this and this a would be mapped to this right so we know anything before this we should start from one right we, we don't need to start from all the way up to it right so basically what we are saying is we will calculate these two things we will calculate the minimum index in i which can cover the prefix before l right we will try to calculate the minimum index i then we will calculate okay what is the minimum in the maximum index j which can cover the suffix r right so we first calculate the minimum index which can cover this particular piece right the in this case this would be the index right and then we will find out the maximum index which can cover this right so basically what is the minimum from the suffix so again this index would be this so if they don't collide it means we can say the given string is a subsequence of uh, s if they collide that is in this case in this case uh, this a is common right like this b is mapped to this b this a is mapped to this a so the first answer for first query would be a and answer for second query would also be this string uh, this index now if because they are colliding we'll say it is not possible but if they don't collide we'll say okay this is possible right so hope this makes sense so now what we need to do we need to just find out these two values right and these two values would be like finding out these two value would be exactly similar to what how we find out the subsequence part right so if you don't understand this i would encourage you to rewind the video uh, past 30 seconds and rewatch it again so what we are trying to say is we will just mm, try to optimize this now the first observation that we made is we don't need to calculate the index of the prefix every time so we don't need to start from zero every time and because prefix and suffix both are constant and s is also constant so we can pre-compute all this we can pre-compute what is the minimum index at which a will be mapped to what is the maximum index at which a will be mapped to and if they don't collide we will say okay the given string the string we are trying to capture is a subsequence of s otherwise it is not a subsequence of s right so let's see this with an example so we need to find out minimum index i which can cover the prefix before l right so let's say this is l now what we want is minimum index 
which can cover B, A, Z, right? So again, the same trick. We will try, we will start S index at this, right? So for this index, we will keep on implementing this index until we hit B. Once we hit B, we know that okay, this is uh, the index 1. Index 1 will cover B. Now we will try to find out the answer for this. So for this, we will start from this, right? Now this this A and A matches. So we know that this uh, up till 2, we can cover B and A. Now the next index is this and we will increment this as well. Now Z. So Z, <coughs> we will keep on incrementing, sorry. So we will keep on incrementing uh, this index until we hit Z. But we don't hit Z and we hit the dead end. So we'll say, okay, everything, uh, this, this prefix can't be mapped to anything. And we will say, okay, nine, up till nine, it will be mapped, right? Now, once we got nine, everything after that would be nine, right? Because what we are saying is this prefix itself can be matched, right? If this can't be matched, how will you map this? Right? So basically, once you got nine, you don't need to move forward. You will just uh, uh, map everything to nine. So that's the way you will compute the minimum index i, which can cover the prefix before l. And the same thing you can apply from in the reverse order to calculate the other thing, right? So the pseudo code would look exactly similar to the subsequent part. We will start at zero. We will keep on incrementing uh, s, right? And finally, the result would be a uh, result of that particular index would be s of index, and we will increment s of index as well, right? So hope this makes sense. Now, uh, like with this, the pseudo code, like the what is the updated solution? The updated solution would be iterate over L and R. Now, instead of computing subsequence, right, we will be checking whether the prefix, okay, let's say this is L, this is R. So, what we will be checking, we will be checking that, okay, what is the prefix, what is the last index up till which prefix would be matched, and what is the first index up till which suffix would be matched. Right. So this is what we have calculated for prefix, right? And this is what we have calculated for suffix, right? So we will just check whether the, what is the prefix for the index before L? It says nine. So it means up till nine, uh, up till nine will be required to map this entire prefix, uh, B, A, and Z, right? And what this uh, suffix index of R, uh, R plus one saying? it says four. So it means that up till four, up till four will be required to map the suffix a. So now four, it, what it says, it says that this entire thing is required, right? And the prefix says that this entire thing is required, right? And because they are overlapping, we'll say, we'll say this is not possible, right? If they would not have overlapped, we'll say this is possible. Or in other words, uh, the remaining string is a subsequence of the given string s, right? So we'll just check whether they are less or not, like whether the prefix index is less than the suffix index or not, because if they are less, then only they will not uh, intersect, right? If they are greater, they will they will intersect. So here the suffix part is four, prefix part is nine. They they are greater, like the prefix is greater than suffix, and hence they will intersect. So whenever it is possible we will take the result, we will take minimum of across the result, right? So with this, what we have done, we have calculated this prefix and suffix before this calculation take order and time, right? We have just seen that. Now, after this, we are iterating over this L and R, which take order n square. And inside L and R, we are doing like order one operations. So this is now the final time complexity, right? Now, even n square will not pass. We have brought down n cube to n square, but even n square will not pass, right? Because n is again 10 to the power 5. Now we need to remove one more n from here. So now there is L and R. So let's the next thing is let's try to remove this R. Now, what does removing R means? So this is a very standard technique. Like whenever you have to remove the inner loop, you will try to say that okay, for a given L, can I find R effectively? Right. So basically what we are saying is instead of doing a linear search over R, can I do something which will give me the value of R efficiently? So that something is more often than not binary search, 
right? So we we are like we are doing a linear search over R. So let's try to see if binary search is applicable or not, right? So we have uh, like we have solved multiple different problems uh, of diff all different kinds of binary search in this channel. I would link the playlist in the description below. Make sure to check it out. But for just to reiterate, what does binary like where are binary search is applicable? Binary search is applicable if let's say you have some uh, some sample space you, where you are searching. Now you will divide the sample space into two half. And if you are deterministically able to say that I will only search in the left half or I will only search in the right half, if we are if we are able to say this deterministically, then we will say okay, binary search is applicable here, right? So what exactly are we trying to search? So let's say we fixed L, right? So we fixed L. Now, once you fixed L, what exactly are you trying to search? We are trying to search that, okay, uh, give me, give me R, which is just greater than this two, right? That's what we're trying to search, right? Because what is the condition? The condition is prefix of index of L minus one should be less than suffix index of R plus one. So what we will say, okay, we know this prefix of L minus one because L is fixed, right? So we know this. Now we just want minimum R. Now why minimum? Because we want R minus L to be as less as possible, right? So we want minimum R, which can give us, which, which is greater than the prefix of L minus one. So we want the minimum R where the suffix index of r plus one is uh, greater than prefix index of uh, l minus one. So in this case, the prefix index of l minus one is two, right? So what we want is minimum r, which is just greater than two. So in this particular case, that r is this a. So the, here it is four, so four is just greater than two, hence this is r. Notice that this is not the r because here it is equals to two. So we want upper bound, we want just greater than two. Right. So now, now we can apply this only when the array is sorted, right? And here array would be sorted. Notice that the index I in the uh, S was always incrementing, right? We are always incrementing S. So hence this array was sorted, right? One, two, nine, nine. And similarly, this array would also be sorted because we will always be decrementing L. Like when you go from backward to calculate the suffix, you will always be decrementing R or index in the in the index in the string S. So this array would always be sorted. So you can just uh, for the indexes which doesn't have, you can just replace this with minus one, right? Similar to above, like above you replaced uh, nothing with nine. In here you will replace nothing with minus one. Now because the array is sorted. You can simply find out uh, what is the index which is just greater than two using a binary search. Now, what we just have done, we have uh, removed this loop, and instead we have we are doing a binary search, and binary search would take log n time. And the, what is the final final complexity? Final complexity would be order n for computing this prefix and suffix indexes, right? And then order n because for this loop this loop L and inside this loop, we will be doing a binary search, which would take order log n time. And the final complexity would be order n log n, right? So this would pass and this is the final complexity. So hope this entire solution makes sense. Now I would strongly, strongly encourage you to pause the video right away and code this solution out yourself because there are multiple different pieces involved in this problem. Uh, if you are very new to this problem, I would encourage you to code all the way from order n cube to order n, n log n. That way you will be learning much more uh, and you will be able to solve this kind of problem in future by yourself as well. So highly, highly, highly encourage you to pause and solve it yourself. Try to get that submitted before jumping on to the actual solution of mine, right? So hope you have tried it. I will now show what is the code which I have done during the contest. So this is the code. What we are trying to do, we are trying to first calculate the forward and backward. This forward and backward are nothing but prefix index and suffix index in our uh, explanation, right? So this, because both of them follow the same algorithm, 
I just uh, have reversed the strings and called the same function, right? Now, this is just uh, like this entire thing is just calculating that suffix of index, right? So uh, we'll look at the earlier subsequences index function afterwards, but now we have forward and backward populated. Now what we'll do is just fix L, L from zero to N and we will find R. Now there is one small condition that you need to take care of. The condition is if the previous index already says that it is equals to, sorry, it is equals to N or in this case, if let's say L is this, if L is this, the previous index already says that it is nine. So if it is already nine, it means that it has exhausted everything, right? It is at here, right? So anything that you will get from the suffix would be smaller than nine, right? Because here you will be getting everything which is smaller than equals to eight, right? So every time it will be intersecting. So you will not, you will never see that this is possible is true, right? So because they are always intersecting, you will never be able to find anything greater than nine in the suffix. So that's where I'm just breaking out from the loop uh, early. This you can skip as well. This is just a optimization that we can do. Now, after this, we are trying to find the first, uh, like what is the index which we need to find the greater element for. So in this case, if L is this, we need to find the element greater than nine, or if L is this, we need to find the element greater than two, right? So that's what we are trying to find valid after. After that, we'll just uh, search, do a binary search in the back array or in the suffix array for this valid after. And uh, we will just uh, like take the minimum of right minus left. Now here we don't need to check for is possible because of this condition. You can skip this condition and you can just place this if loop, uh, if condition here that if right is less than minus one or if they are not intersecting, then you will uh, do this minimum, right? So hope this entire solution makes sense. Uh, this uh, earliest subsequence index is very similar to what we have just seen. Uh, we'll start with S index zero. We'll keep on incrementing S index until we uh, get the character we are searching for. And then we will we'll just uh, assign this to result of T index. And this condition will make sure that uh, we are not crossing uh, N anytime because so because we want everything to be nine, we don't want this to be 10, 11 or something. Right? So that's what, that's why this condition is doing. So hope this entire solution is clear. If you have any doubts, I would strongly encourage you to uh, rewatch the video. And if you still have doubt, please post them in the comment section below. I would have to answer. And again, if you haven't coded it out yourself yet, I would encourage you to code it yourself because that would, that would help you learn much more uh, than just uh, seeing the solution. So hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.